really difficult to be over here at noon. It is lunchtime and it pulls you away. I'm very happy that you showed up, the individuals who did. Pay for it is an interesting possibility that I hope you will enjoy hearing more about. Without further introduction, I'd like to introduce Maggie Humphreys, who is a native of Puyallup and did attend Pierce and Kelly Smith. Thank you very much. So my name is Kelly Smith. Uh, we're here from the Economic Opportunity Institute, the organization that's responsible for coming up with the idea that we think is wonderful called Pay It Forward, and this is my colleague Maggie Humphreys. Hi everyone. So we all know that post-secondary education is key. It's key to our own success, it's key to our community's success, and it's key to our nation's success. Now we hear a lot about the student loan crisis and student debt and the rising cost of college, but it's important to remember the faces and stories behind that rhetoric. It's students or graduates like Kelly and I who are now paying off thousands in debt. It's students like you in this room that are trying to change the system from the inside. And it's families who are worried about their children being left, out, left in the dust and losing their opportunity at a shot at the middle class and upper, upward economic mobility. That's the story of Pay It Forward coming together to solve these problems, and that's the story we're here today to tell. So as recipients of higher education, you guys know how important it is to have access to higher education. It means good jobs, it means economic mobility, and it means a stronger economy for our state and nation. Uh, in fact, I read a, a paper the other day that said by 2018, two out of three jobs will require some college education and one out of three will, will require a bachelor's degree. Um, that's coming quickly, so we need to make sure that our students have access to higher education. Uh, the problem is that we don't have as much access as we need to have. Why don't we have as much access? Well, you're looking at it. Uh, in 1990, tuition was, well, today tuition is more than tripled since 1990 at our four-year universities. At our CTCs, it's more than doubled since 1990. And this is happening because the cost of education in Washington State is staying about the same, but our state is paying less and less, which means you guys and your families have to pay more and more. So what do we do about this crisis? Um, well, if college costs too much, you have two options. You can not go and not get one of those good jobs that you all know college education will get you. Or you could take out student loan debt, which many of you probably have. Maggie and I definitely have. Um, if you knew the, nu the number of the student debt that I have, you would probably get up and walk out of this room right now. It's terrifying, actually. So um, instead of having student loan debt, there's an alternative for students to pay their portion, and it's called Pay It Forward. So Pay It Forward is a new model for funding students' portion of higher education. Um, it's designed to restore public access to higher education, which we have lost over the last few decades. So here's what it is in a nutshell. Um, it abolish, abolishes upfront tuition. In its place, graduates make a contribution of their income after they graduate. Um, it is meant to, like I said, open up access and create a new tool for funding higher education. Uh, it can be used on top of the higher education funding tools that you already have. If you're a student who receives state need grants, you can still use your state need grant. If you are a student who receives veterans benefits, you can still use your veterans benefits. Pay It Forward is a model that's designed to um, be a tool in addition to those things that you already have at, uh, at your disposal. So what do the contributions look like? Well, it's a small fixed percentage of your income. So we're talking 0.75% to maybe 4% of your income. And it is a, um, for a predetermined number of years, and it depends on how many years you attended the certain institution. So we have some models in Washington State where for a community college, you would contribute maybe 0.75% of your income per year attended. 
So let's say you attended Pierce College for two years, you would contribute 1.5% of your income for a predetermined number of years. For four-year uh, colleges, you could maybe contribute 1% per year attended. So if you attended the UW for four years, you could expect to contribute maybe 4% of your income for a predetermined number of years. Um, so how many years are we talking about? Um, our models in Washington State, and they're different for each institution, are somewhere between 10 and 25 years. So say for UW, it'd be 4% for 20 years or something like that. Um, from the institution and the state's perspective, these contributions go into a public uh, trust fund. So that public trust fund grows as graduates uh, make contributions year after year and the future student, and it funds future students' education, and then they participate and pay it forward as well. So with all of those contributions year after year, the fund grows itself, and it sustains itself, and it allows more students to be added on to pay it forward and have the same debt-free access to college. So one of the greatest things um, that I think uh, Pay It Forward has going for it, is how quickly it's gone from this idea to a movement. So Pay It Forward was conceptualized by our executive director, John Burbank, in 2011. Um, but it wasn't until 2012 that a group of students at Portland State University uh, decided to take it on. Um, essentially, these groups of students, they were in a classroom that was a practicum-based uh, course for their senior year, and they were focused on student debt. What a great way to, to enter the workforce. And their focus was, what, what are we gonna do about this? What's a problem and how are we gonna fix it? So they looked at uh, widespread uh, uh, ideas of policy solutions that have been discussed around the country for student debt and they picked Pay It Forward. Um, they thought it, it was something they could take on, that they could generate bipartisan support for. Um, and they actually had a great opportunity to work with the Oregon Working Families Party. It's a multi-partisan uh, party in Oregon um, to take this to their state legislature. So in December of last year, they formally introduced the bill. And then this past July, the bill actually passed unanimously through both chambers, which is pretty remarkable. Oregon has a reputation for a very liberal state, but the Democrats only actually have a majority in both houses by one or two votes. So they were able to gather a lot of Republican and Democrat support for this because this idea of opening access back up for students uh, to higher education and to good family wage jobs is something that everyone can agree needs to get done. So pay it forward. Oh, sorry, I didn't finish the story. Uh, <laughs> So in August, our own uh, representative, Larry Sequist, committed to introducing Pay It Forward legislation in Washington. Um, and this, year, uh, this upcoming legislative session that will start uh, in January. Um, and as of uh, today, we have about 19 states around the country that are looking at their own versions of Pay It Forward legislation. Um, and uh, they've come together to work with us and with other states to uh, try to come up with programs that work for their communities and um, push forward for public access. So here in Washington, what would Pay It Forward look like? Well, right now we're in the stage where we're going out to our communities, to our students, to faculty, to uh, legislators to talk about what kind of programs they think could work best for Washington State. Um, and these are some of the ideas that have been floating around. So we've talked about using Pay It Forward at a select community college, wherein a community college of the state would be able to offer Pay It Forward to its students as a financial aid tool. Um, these, and these are all pilot programs um, that the state could take on to, to roll out Pay It Forward in, in the state. We also talk, have talked about using Pay It Forward as kind of a universal grant um, for one or two area high schools. Um, wherein anyone who graduates from that high school can go on to a public, uh, public higher ed institution of their choice, um, and they will be able to use Pay It Forward to finance that. And lastly, uh, Pay It Forward could also be used for STEM degree majors um, to incentivize students to pursue uh, job-ready degrees. So that's what Pay It Forward could look like at different institutions. Let's now talk about what Pay It Forward could look like for students. So meet Mia. Mia's over at Rogers. 
um, and she's thinking about uh, what her options are for college. Now, Mia could use student loans, or she could do pay it forward. So let's kind of, so she's looking at the math and thinking about how it breaks down. So if Mia used loans to finance her two-year community college degree, she would graduate making $115 monthly payments. Now, up here we have Mia's income, that's around $19,000. So on a monthly basis, that's about $1,500. That's before taxes, that's before rent, that's before healthcare. So $115 is a lot of money to take on. And as Mia, um, and yeah, so, and as you can see, um, her payment will stay the same as she, as she goes through. Now, if Mia decided to go to UW and graduated with four years of, of a, a four-year degree financed by debt, she would graduate with a monthly payment of $230. And again, her income is not that high, $27,000 a year, um, which breaks down to about $2,200 a month. I won't peek at my notes, but it's about that. And um, again, this is before taxes and whatnot, so this is a good chunk of her disposable income. Now, but lucky for Mia, she has another option for college, and she looks at pay it forward. So if Mia uses pay it forward to come to Pierce for two years and get her degree, she's gonna graduate with that same income of about $19,000 likely, but her monthly payment will be $24. Five years later, it's only 34. And so it's a very different level of income, and it grows with her ability to pay. If she decided to go to UW, um, similarly, she would graduate with a really small monthly obligation in proportion to her income, only about $90. Um, and again, what's important here is that Mia's paying the least when she has the least ability to pay, when she's making her lowest earnings. Now, say Mia got laid off in five years or had to go down to part-time because she started a family. Again, this is a proportion of your income. It's a flat rate. So it'll move about with um, similar to your FICA tax in that if you're not working, you're not paying. But also, if you're working part-time, you're still paying that same proportion. What's great about this as well is when Mia graduates, she's not stuck with this massive burden of debt, which has a whole host of benefits. But most, but kind of, I think most optimistically, it allows Mia to more quickly enter the economy. She's more likely to go on to buy a car, to invest in a house, to start her own business. And these are all things that are much less likely to happen with the anxiety and debt burden that student debt leaves our students with. So we've talked about a few of these, um, but some of the advantages of pay it forward over loan repayment and even over income-based repayment, which it often gets compared to because they're both income-based, um, are listed here. First of all, it removes the psych psychological barriers of tuition. Um, when students are looking at going to college and they're looking forward to $30,000 bill for tuition alone, Many students or would-be students decide not to go because they don't want to deal with the debt burden that they'll have to after they graduate. Um, with pay it forward, that psychological barrier is gone because you know that you'll make a contribution after graduation and you know that contribution will always be proportional to your income, so it will always be manageable. Um, pay it forward also increases career choice for the same reasons. Instead of deciding to uh, get a job in a city where you could make the most money because you're worried about being able to pay off those student loans you had to take out to go to school, you can choose your job based on your skills and your interests because you don't have to choose your job based on your projected income. And the other way that it increases career choice is it allows you to get the training that you want to get to get the job that you want to get without concern for how much is this education going to cost me. Uh, I have a coworker who told me a story the other day, her fiance is a doctor and he has an assistant who's a medical assistant. And he says, you know, this, this, this guy's brilliant. He just won't go to med school because it costs too much money. And what we wanna do with pay it forward is to increase this, the access so the people that want to go on and become a doctor 
can do so without the worry of how much this costs. So it provides predictable, manageable contributions. Um, the thing that I like about Pay It Forward is that with loan repayment, you always know how much you're going to have to pay the bank. You don't always know if you're going to be able to pay the bank. Um, with Pay It Forward contributions, you don't necessarily know how much you're going to have to contribute each month because you can't tell into the future and know exactly what your income's going to be. But you're always certain that you will be able to make that contribution. Uh, that peace of mind is really, really valuable. Uh, many of you may already be paying student loans or you're looking into paying student loans once you guys are finished with your education. And I can tell you being somebody who does make student loan payments every month, that certainty is worth a lot. <coughs> Um, the other thing that we don't talk about with loan debt that often is the actual psychological stress of having it and the number of hours that one spends um, paying loans, applying for programs for repayment, um, even if you have the opportunity to say apply for a, an income-based repayment plan. Uh, that takes hours to do often. You have to do it sometimes multiple times a year and it's stressful and it's time consuming. Um, the nice thing about Pay It Forward is that it can be designed to just come right out of your paycheck like Social Security. It's something that you don't have to think about and you don't have to spend your time doing. It just happens. From a, a, a community standpoint, what Pay It Forward really wants to do is reclaim opportunity and reopen access to higher education. It also strives to create a community of responsibility. So when we make loan payments, we're paying those loan payments to a bank or sometimes to the federal government, and that money sort of disappears into thin air. And with Pay It Forward, what we do is we put those contributions directly into a trust fund that directly pays for the next generation of students to go to college and have the same access that you had because you got to, to participate and pay it forward. Um, I have a sister who's four years younger than I am, and so I can think about it quite literally. If I graduated and four years later she started school, that the, the money that I'm contributing the year that I graduate could actually be paying for my little sister to go to college. And I think that that's an important thing to think about, that this money doesn't go just anywhere, it actually goes directly in, back into your community to help educate the rest of the students to build a stronger economy and a stronger community. So that's, that's your introduction to Pay It Forward, and this is how this usually goes. We tell you a little bit about Pay It Forward, and then we say, are there any questions? And generally, there are quite a few, so don't be shy. Um, we will answer them if we can, and if not, we will follow up individually with you. I see one here. 